Hello class. We are today going to look at integrating internet into the curriculum. Just as we always do, let's have a short word of motivation. said this, small minds discuss people, average minds discuss events, but great minds discuss ideas. So this world, there are three groups of people in this world, small, average and great minds. So the small minds are the people who, who are going to always discuss people. You see his dress, you see that person, you see that boy, you see that lady. He has this, he has that, he doesn't have this, he doesn't have that. These are the people who can insult lecturers. These are the people who can insult politicians. These are the people who can insult people as old as their father. Because all they are thinking about is people. They are think, always thinking about people. Now, there are some people who have also graduated. And they always discuss events. So they can remember the last football match when Chelsea played Manchester. They can remember the last episode of Kunkumba game, the last episode of uh, Love and Something Something. They can narrate a whole uh, uh, um, soap opera. Any TV reality show they can tell you. These people have graduated from just discussing people, but discussing events. So whatever event that happened, they can just tell you. But the last group, which are almost always silent, always in a minority, are the great minds. When they meet, they discuss ideas. When they sit alone, they look for ideas. They discuss within themselves how to bring out novel things, how to bring out the best. They don't have time for people. They don't have time for people. At times, they, 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 they cut themselves from the world at times because whatever you see about them doesn't bother them so much. They don't bother themselves with events, but they always focus on their ideas. So which one are you? I pray that um, all of us become great minds so we can solve the problems of Madagana in the world. Thank you. So we are looking at integrating the internet into the classroom. Now what is, when you talk about internet in the classroom, it brings to mind social software. When you talk about social software, social software is a category of software that functions to allow user collaboration and communication. When you talk of collaboration, that is meeting together. So users can meet and talk. Let me reduce it down. So they can meet and share ideas. That is a social. So by now, at least you are thinking about some social softwares. Now these are some examples of social softwares. We have blogging, instant messaging, internet forum, e-learning, massively multiplayer online games. People play most of these games online. You, you, you can play a game with about different people in, in the different um, uh, countries. Media sharing, you share media like YouTube. Uh, online dating, online dating. 
then your social network virtual roles and wikis. So these are some examples of social softwares. Now let's look at blogs. Do you remember the last time you went you went to the internet to search for information for an assignment? When you typed a search phrase, it brought seemingly um, a write-up. Somebody had had written about that thing. Now, if it is not a verified um, website, if the uh, if not a verified website, then it's a blog. A blog. When you talk about a blog, people, uh, um, authors share their opinion on something. So let's look at it. A blog. The full name is web blog. It's a discussion or informational website published on the World Wide Web consisting of discrete informal diary style text entries. So you post you post the information there. So today you can post something, tomorrow you you, you post another thing. Uh -huh. So when you go out there to search for, for normally what you, you you grab from the from the internet mostly for your assignment are these blogs. That is someone's opinion. So um, in academic work we don't we don't want blogs. You don't cite from blogs. So you need I'll show you where to go to search for information, correct information. That is part of this class for um, academic work. Now, these are some types of blogs. We have personal blogs. You can decide as a student to blog your assignment, post your assignment, so others can see and also copy. Now, how do you make money? When people are coming to your site, when people keep coming to your site, then um, this it, it gives the um, there's there this software this uh, app called uh, Google Accent uh, yeah Accents. Now you can you can integrate it into your web page so that you you advertise the because people more people are coming to your site you can uh, 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 blog you can advertise there so if people see it people click on it whatever they do you get money we can have group blogs a group of people can can blog together as a class you can blog as an institution can blog like corporate blogs then we have micro blogging that is Twitter. Short, 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 short post. You can also micro blog on Facebook. Then also we have aggregated blogs. That is, people, what they do is they, they bring together blogs from different people onto one page. That is an aggregated blog. Now we have media type blogs. Media type blogs we have. Um, some share want to share videos, so like YouTube is, is a form of media type blog. So you go there, you can share your video, people can download, comment, and all that. That is also a so uh, a media type it can either be a video or an audio. If it's an audio, that is a podcast, okay? You can have that one too. The general based um, Jean, Jean based blocks. That is um, people blog about a certain issue. 
COVID-19, people can blog about it, people can write about it and post it to your website. Uh -huh. So all that, you, all of the information you receive at that site is, is COVID-19, that is it. Now reverse blocks. Most, mostly, it is um, a blogger who blog, who writes, and the correct term is to blog, who blogs for people to read. But in reverse blogging, um, the readers can submit their post for that to make a blog. So there are people there who will be sifting the information so that you don't post anything back or whatever you post that is no good is taken out. So the users, it is the readers who block to be aggregated. Okay, let's look at the benefit of blocks. You can read. Hmm? It's, it's, it means to them become critical and analytical thinkers. As, as, so that you can allow, you can let your student block their assignments for others to comment on it. And that, uh, that will be a good thing. Okay. And also, um, there's increased exposure to quality content. Once students start to blog, now, and they are criticized, they begin to, to know how to look for good content. Now, people can learn how to live a solitary life and how to have a social interaction. Now, so when you are writing, you write alone. But when it gets into the public domain, it becomes, it's for the public. So you learn how to manage some of these interactions. Okay. Now some criticisms. Um, confidentiality. At times, someone can pick someone else's document and put there. Um, and also, not everything there is, is good. So the quality concept, plagiarism, hmm? Pragia, pragia. So some, just as I've said, you copy someone's content without referencing the person. It, it's normally in blocks. Uh -huh. Now, at times it's also hard to assess and grade, like going uh, one after the other to their blocks. And also, aside that, um, you see, every, any, anyone has a way of doing his or her own thing. So it becomes uh, uh, difficult assessing them. Then, asking users to blog, they go there and they can be distracted. They can be distracted. They go to blog and then they see their Facebook uh, message popping up. They see some and then they can get distracted. Then it's, it's, it's not, you cannot cite it in academic writing. Okay. These are some blogging development tools. These are some tools you can use to blog. Um, I will show you how to use, how to blog using the blogger. Mm, using the blogger. I'll show you how to use, uh, how to uh, blog, how to create your own blog. Now, instant messaging. When you talk about instant messaging, we are looking at applications that allows uh, users to communicate with one another over a network in real time, in relative privacy. So. Uh, it allows students to uh, users to communicate over a network, and then usually it's it's at times seem to be private. But what we mean by the relative privacy is that 
everything you do, nothing you do on the on the World Wide Web is private. So I want to advise my ladies, my guys, who who can just post anything onto uh, social media. You just post anything. You just say anything. I think one, I don't know, this this person, uh, I think this man, teacher Kogyo, had a, a challenge like that. This this guy who is a video blogger, teacher Kogyo, I think he has an issue like that with his, his old post. He posted something on, on his Facebook page and later people use that against him. That is bad. I learned someone because of a post was not offered a visa. A post he had done against a head of state in another country was not given a visa to that. So I think some people go online and they can just say anything. It will get to a time you can just say anything about Valley View and Ghana is poor and Nakufuado, you can just say that. But to get to a point, you go for an interview, they will pull all those things and ask you, Madam, Mr. <coughs> on so so and so date, you said Nakufuado was this, this and that. Can you explain? And that might be 10, 20 years ago. You can come for an interview in Valley University. You pull that and, uh, and ask, Madam, uh, Mr. When you were a student, you remember you posted this about the school. How true was this? And why did you do that? You may even not, you didn't think true. So don't think it is everything you do online is private. These are some examples of uh, instant messaging, WhatsApp, Skype, and all that. So these are some examples. Okay. Now let's look at wikis. Wikis are web pages whose content can be edited by anyone who has it. So, um, for wikis, the, the, main, the main idea is to have a, a moving knowledge. So, assuming we are talking about the origin of accounts in Ghana, if I should post something on Wikipedia, and you come and look at it and you see that hmm, there is a flaw in, in this man's submission, you can edit it. So um, that is how a wiki is. So these are tools you can use to create wikis. Social networks. Now they are computer mediated technologies that facilitate the creation and sharing of information, ideas, careers, interests, and other forms of expression via virtual community, via its true, true virtual communities and networks. So, um, all these connecting to people and then sharing information, you can, uh, that, that forms the social network so um, you can you can still stay at home and be connected Good. now let's look at other social softwares one we have internet forums so there are forums where you can ask questions and then you are giving solutions so these are some of them now we have e-learning. E-learning is also um, a social software where information is shared. 
you remember we talk about a lot in the place of ICT in distance education. Now, we are, these are media sharing. So YouTube, most of you know about of only YouTube. But these are others you can also explore. Then we have virtual worlds. Virtual worlds. In virtual world, virtual worlds are normally like um, a second world where you enter when you sign up to enter into this software you create your avatar the avatar means your 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 um, a representation in that world that represents you and whatever you want to do this avatar does it on your behalf so you can do anything and um, some are used for studies uh, others there are some others when you get higher you can even have an affair and then be pregnant and then give birth and then grow uh, uh, nurture your child and all that like all that you can do in a real life you can do it there so these are also social softwares okay now one uh, effective one one effective tool of a scholar is to be able to search so in the next session i'm going to teach you practically how to search the net so I'll, I'll put that video also out it will be a separate video from this so you watch out for that one too how to search the net that is effective ways one you can use keywords you can use keywords so um, if you want uh, intelligent multiple intelligence so you can use multiple intelligence that's so and then you can use quotation marks for exact phrases if you write multiple intelligence um, Google is going to break all documents with multiple and all document of intelligence. So a document of multiple uh, sclerosis will come. But then, if you are looking at multiple intelligence, you, you should make it an exact thing. And also you can use the Boolean plus or minus. You can use Google Advanced Search. You can also search through your browser history. You can also um, use different search engines if you are not getting the right response from one and also you can use specific file extensions so let's let's get our hands dirty are you ready let's go